So now we are going to discuss about the gram-positive caucus, staphylococcus and streptococcus. Uh, why these are important? In most of the exam, it could be theory exam or you're uh, preparing for FMG exam or uh, for NEET exam, you will always have question from staphylococcus or streptococcus. It's a guarantee. It's like 100% guarantee, I can say. Sometimes they don't, but usually it's a very important topic. So now, uh, before going to the topic, once again, let's a little bit revise about the gram-positive bacteria we know in the microbiology. If you remember, the shortcut was McDonald's. 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 Okay. I'm not going to discuss everything here. Uh, we are interested in, yes, yes, for staphylococcus and streptococcus. These are the two important cocci. Okay. Rest all the basis. So, M, you know, this is Mycobacterium actinomyces, and another A is for anthrax, that's basis anthrax, and C for cornebacterium, diphtheria, or clostridium, D for diphtheria, C for clostridium. And then N for nocardia, uh, and then L for listeria monocytogens. Then comes this, yes, we have two words, staphylococcus and streptococcus. So what happened? Why there is, uh, it's very important to know this. See, why it's important to differentiate for staphylococcus, streptococcus, both are gram positive cocci. What happened usually when we may, when we grow in a culture media, in microbiology, we grow any pus or urine or any sputum or any sample comes, we are growing in a culture media and you get the colonies. So when you get the colonies, the next step is we are doing a gram stain. When you do a gram stain, if it comes a gram positive cocci, if we, we are getting a gram positive cocci, that is violet color cocci like this, we have to uh, we have to do some tests to differentiate whether staph or streptococcus. One test we have to do and then identify it is uh, staph or streptococcus. That is what, that is the, the which test is that? That is your catalase. The first test is catalase. See this picture? This one, effervescence of bubbles, what you see, that is the catalase test. So when you see this, if it is positive, then it is totally, if it is positive or negative, if it is positive, it is your staphylococcus. It could be any staphylococcus. If it is negative, then that is strepto. That is separate. You will leave it. That's another topic. In staphylo, again, the most important, you know, staphylococcus aureus is the most important pathogen. So again, we have, we have many staphylococcus species. So you should differentiate staphylococcus aureus from other things. The next test you will be doing is your coagulase. Coagulase. And if that one comes positive or negative, if it's positive, that is your staphylococcus aureus. If that comes negative, then that is called cones. That means coagulase negative staphylococcus. Okay, got it? This is the schematic, you know, the basic view. Whenever you see a gram positive cocci, how you're going to differentiate. Okay, now next one. How to do a catalyst test? So catalyst test, what are the important questions here? So this is a question. Whatever I told you, the scheme in the first test is catalyst. Even if you forgot, please remember. Sare staffs. Every staffs, nursing staff, so or hospital staff, any staff, usually they have what? Unka garpe kyaute cat hota, billy hota. Okay, remember that cat is there. Okay. Now when you go to the catalyst test, how to do this test? You add Three percentage H two O two, three percentage hydrogen peroxide. Okay, with the colony. This is a, you take a glass slide. You mix the colony. The you just uh, you mix the colony with three percent H two O two. Then if it comes like this, cat, if this uh, bubbles or effervescence, that means catalyst positive. Okay. So as I told you, if it is positive, then it will be your staphylococcus. If it is negative, then it is staphylo. If it is negative, then that is streptococcus. That's it. Okay. Now. Another test is what? The staphylococcus should be differentiated from the other staphylococcus. Staphylococcus or audio should be differentiated from other staphylococcus. So what test you do? Coagulase. Coagulase, these are the tests you're seeing here. You see here, this test. So this is the first one is catalyst. And this one, see, this is two things we have. We have a slide and then we have a tube coagulase. Okay. We have other names also. Other names are what? You call the slide as the slide as the bound coagulase. The slide is called, otherwise called bound. Okay. This is the bound. This is also called bound. And tube ka kya bolte? Free coagulase. Free. Iska kaise yaad karna? YouTube is free for all. YouTube is free. YouTube sabko free hai. You understand? YouTube is free for all. This is the best way to remember. So remember, tube, free coagulase. Okay, you can have a question. Which is a, uh, which of which of the following is called as a uh, free coagulase? Means it's your tube coagulase. Okay. So we can do coagulase either slide or we can do tube. So if that comes positive, means that is your staphylococcus aureus. Okay. Please fix in your mind. We have other tests also. Apart from this, we have other tests like DNA, phosphatase, thermonuclease, phos uh, um, thermonuclease, mannitol salt agar also, which is specific for staphylococcus aureus. But the best one is coagulase. In 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 lab or in uh, for us for diagnostic purpose, the easiest test to do is coagulase. Rest all other things. Okay. Now, so coagulase is done. So as I told you, if your coagulase comes positive, then that is your staphylococcus 
or re yes staphylococcus or re yes if it is negative then that would be your which one your cones we call cones cones means coagulase negative cones means coagulase negative staphylococcus so let's talk uh, how to, uh, in cones two organisms are very important they are what are the two organisms that are very important they are actually staphylococcus epidermidis epidermidis and other one is your staphylococcus saprophyticus 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 okay how to differentiate no there's a one test called novobycin disc test this is a disc okay novobycin is a drug it's a disc you put the disc if it comes sensitive that is epidermidis so kaise yaad karna mr nova ka skin infection hai skin infection hai matlab epidermidis hai uska staphylococcus epidermidis hai theek hai epidermidis so aise yaad karna nova sensitive nova sensitive is epidermidis resistant ho gaya to saprophyticus okay that's the way you're going to remember now let's go to individual organisms so i would like to start with the cones first because see staphylococcus always a big topic cones is always neglected and you have questions from cones only it's very easy to remember i'll tell you now how to remember those uh, points here staphylococcus so first topic which we're going to discuss is the cones so cones as i told you we have epidermidis and saprophyticus two important uh, organisms as we spoke so how to remember uh, epidermidis is usually how i told you it's novobycin sensitive and this is resistant and it's normal flora the most important thing is this epidermidis causes biofilm biofilm we already spoke one more organism which one is causing biofilm is pseudomonas you remember pseudomonas no many bacteria e coli clebsiella everything forms but these are two common organisms pseudomonas and staphylococcus very importantly uh, especially epidermidis causes biofilm you know whenever biofilm means it will attract to what any uh, catheter prosthetic wall shunt you know all this iv catheter or maybe urinary catheter doesn't matter so in these places so one of the thing is that if the prosthetic wall infective endocarditis caused by is a question frequently asked very frequently asked that your answer should be your epidermidis epidermidis matlab it is prosthetic prosthetic wall infective endocarditis common cause epidermidis bas okay sometimes it will be just cones plainly that's also correct either cones if it's specifically epidermidis okay what about your saprophyticus and uh, of course csf sand iv uh, canula anything related this clue if it comes you think about epidermidis first okay okay now what about saprophyticus saprophyticus is your sapra i remember how to remember this one sapra is a girl sapra is a young girl okay so any young female young girl who is having uti sexually active girl who is having uti sometimes also called honeymoon stage that means after marriage the first time when they have uh, sex you know when they have uti so that would be your saprophyticus okay so remember so young young person with uti sexually active girl with uti which is the most common gram positive cocky question comes it is sapra 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 is a ladki young ladki who gets what uti okay this is the way you're going to remember it you'll never forget it these are repeatedly asked question that's what i'm stressing again and again and i have stressed this point only more than all other points okay so honeymoon cystitis also okay sapra goes for sapra honeymoon she get uti cystitis bladder infection now let's go to the king of infections staphylococcus aureus the subject with the, the topic which is very 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 important so what are they so as i told you staphylococcus aureus means all staphylococcus are catalyst positive but aureus is what specifically coagulase positive okay now in which one where it is located which is the normal flora where, where, where the, the normal flora of staphylococcus lives in which part of our body more it's in your nasal nasal part nose okay sometimes you call it as a nasal flare also nasal flare and these days there's a question asked to control this especially surgical point of view what is the ointment we use mupirocin mupris mupirios m u p r i o c m mupirocin okay mupirocin ointment is the ointment that is to carriers the staphylococcus carriers cause especially for uh, healthcare workers we can give so that to prevent the staphylococcus aureus infection so this also another question and uh, the most common route of spread is usually to the hands of the healthcare worker hands so we that's what frequent hand wash is very very important hand wash hand hygiene is important because of this only because lot of hospital acquired infections staphylococcus aureus is cause one of the important cause of many hospital acquired infections what are the virulence factors so staphylococcus aureus has something called protease a which is from coan a okay this question also has uh, been asked in few exams a1 remember a1 powder okay a1 powder so a1 is one thing for staphylococcus aureus of, of course humolysis leucocidin and pvl is also as pvl is basically panton valentin this is by staphylococcus aureus okay panton valentin leucocidin cidin even if you forgot staffs kya karta hai staffs ka kya pasand hai valentin day celebrate karna pasand hai staffs like valentines day staffs like scat ek humne already bola hai dusra unka valentine pasand hai okay and more staffs ka clue i'll give you it will come now 
So what are the other tests? I told you, apart from apart from for Staphylococcus aureus, if you want to differentiate from the cones, there are, which are, this is frequently asked question, what are the tests to differentiate? One is coagulase is positive for Staph aureus. With that, DNAs, phosphatase, thermonuclease, thermonuclease, and also mannitol salt agar. These are the things to differentiate what Staphylococcus aureus from the cones. You can have question for sure. I'm going to put very, very important because these are the tests specific only for the staph aureus, not for the cones. Okay, got it? Now the disease caused by Staphylococcus aureus. When you talk about the disease caused by Staphylococcus aureus, these are the diseases. So you see, anything, that's what I call skin, uh, king of skin infection is your Staphylococcus aureus. So what is this one? If you see here, you see here, this is the, it could be a small folliculitis, then it become a furuncle, right? Folliculitis, then a furuncle, carbuncle, if it's bigger, it becomes a carbuncle and carbuncle becomes big, it's like a boil, right? Boil and then if it becomes bigger, it goes to an abscess. Abscess can be any abscess, breast abscess, parotid abscess, any abscess comes uh, uh, in the skin, it is Staphylococcus aureus, first thing. And this is impetigo, impetigo. If you remember, impetigo contagiosa, impetigo contagiosa. Again, most Staphylococcus aureus most common, followed by Streptococcus also. Streptococcus also causes um, uh, impetigo contagiosa, okay? So both are important. Both Stepto, Stepto cause impetigo. You have to remember that. And what about this one? This one here. So this is a this is a pneumonia. This is a, this is a pneumonia caused by Streptococcus aureus. And you know what type of pneumonia? That's lobular pneumonia. We're going to talk about it. This this specific sign. What it is called? Pneumatocil. Pneumatocil. This is uh, especially when it causes the lobular pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, that is actually a nosocomial pneumonia. This is a catastic sign. When you see this pneumatocil sign, it is Staphylococcus aureus. If the question comes like, you know, related to hospital and if they give this picture, it is Staphylococcus aureus. So now the Staphylococcus infections can be caused directly by the organism or by the toxins it's releasing. So now when you talk about directly by the organism, the important thing is the, it is the most common cause of acute infective endocarditis. And which wall? Native wall. Native wall means in healthy wall. In healthy wall, we thought in prosthetic wall, it was Staphylococcus epidermidis. I told epidermidis was biofilm, so oh, I love it. But in native wall endocarditis, you have this one, native wall. And we have damaged wall. So damaged wall means it will come the viridens. I'm going to talk about Staphylococcus viridens. But when we we'll talk about acute infective, infective endocarditis, or overall most common cause of infective endocarditis will be your Staphylococcus aureus. Also, IV abuses. IV abuses, it makes sense. Q, why it makes sense? Even if you forget, remember, staph or you say for acute. Acute infective endocarditis is your uh, Staphylococcus aureus. IV drug use because skin is full of Staphylococcus aureus. So when you IV drug uses when you're using, sharing the needle or even their own skin, whatever, the uh, organism in the skin will go directly inside. So IV drug uses, the most common cause of infective endocarditis is Staphylococcus, and especially we call right-sided, right-sided heart infective endocarditis. Because your left-sided would be left-sided heart infective carditis is by enterococcus. Enterococcus, we are going to talk about that also. Enterococcus, please remember, but it's not most common. Enterococcus is not most common, but enterococcus causes most left-sided infective endocarditis, left-sided, right? Left-sided, yes, left-sided infective endocarditis. But your right side is caused by your staphylococcus aureus, important. Okay, that's the reason you have to do blood culture uh, when you suspect infective endocarditis and rule out if it's staphylococcus aureus or cones or whatever in the organ cell. So bone, you know, one of the frequent as most common cause of acute osteomyelitis, acute osteo myelitis is by your staphylococcus aureus but but there is an exception if the patient is having the sickle cell anemia you know the answer very well what is that salmonella salmonella is the most common cause that's a question frequently asked your salmonella typhoid causes typhoid fever not only just typhoid fever if the patient is having sickle cell anemia yes for sickle s yes for salmonella not staphylococcus here exception okay sickle cell anemia salmonella is the most common cause and in lung you have lobular pneumonia fine and x-ray i just show you the picture before nematocil you see nematocil and it's the most common cause of uh, gram positive cocci, which is causing most common cause of nosocomial pneumonia, is your Staphylococcus aureus also. Okay. Overall, it is uh, E. coli, Klebsiella. We have a lot of organisms there. But uh, in uh, if you ask gram positive cocci, Staphylococcus aureus, the king of infection. Okay. Skin and soft tissue infection. I just show you some few pictures. If you remember, what are they? They are folliculitis, and then they are furuncle, they are furuncle, and they are carbuncle. See, any skin-related infections, boils, bullus impetigo, I just showed you, impetigo contagious or bullus impetigo, they are impetigos. All the impetigos are caused by stephylo or streptococcus, remember that. And all the any surgical site, after surgery, the uh, uh, surgical site infection also is one of the important causes. 
And abscess, I told you, breast abscess, parotid abscess, frequently asked abscess, but uh, also parotid abscess and mastitis. Mastitis, you know, breastfeeding, a mother is breastfeeding and then she gets this mastitis. Uh, so what is the, the reason? It's Staphylococcus aureus. You don't have to think too much. Anything, it is A for again, you have a clue. Staphylococcus aureus. Okay. And there's one mycosis called botiromycosis. Botiromycosis. Botiromycosis, please remember, this is not your other mycosis. Which mycosis? We have acnomycosis, mucormycosis, those are fungus. Acnomycosis, acnomycosis is different. But then there is botulomycosis, which is almost looking like that, but it's almost looking like the typical granular discharge, typical that uh, granule, that typical, you know, the, fist, the uh, sinus, all those type of sinus. But it's not staphylococcus. It is your, this one, your staphylococcus aureus. Okay. Now, toxin-mediated diseases. Toxin-mediated diseases, if you see this picture, you can easily say this is a scarlet skin syndrome. Scarlet skin syndrome, babies. Okay. So, these are, see the toxin, it's a toxin related so now we're going to talk about the toxin related diseases so this picture is frequently asked so this is staphylococcus scarlet skin syndrome okay this is by the toxins so which the first one is food poisoning you know i already repeated the food poisoning there are two uh, important bacteria that causes food poisoning within six hours within six hours what are they within they are your staphylococcus aureus and other one is your B series. We will talk about that now. So in food poisoning, it's caused by which toxin? Entro entrotoxin. Entrotoxin has something special with the entrotoxin. Why it is important? Because this is a uh, super antigen. Okay, it's a super antigen. Not only so, there are three important super antigens in staphylococcus, staphylococcus, though we have many in whole uh, microbiology, but then you remember these things. What are they? One is your staphylococcus entrotoxin urine. And the other one is your staphylococcus TSS, toxic shock syndrome, staphylococcus, uh, TSST, toxic shock syndrome. Another one is your streptococcal pyrogenic exotoxin. We are going to talk about in the streptococcus more. So these three are the important SP. This is also called as SP, A and B. These three are important super antigen. Super antigen means you don't need lots of stimulation. Mild stimulation causes excess release of cytokine release and very risky, very dangerous. Okay, that's what. So now uh, the food poisoning we're talking, It's uh, I told you, it happens within six or eight. You eat any food, especially which food potato salad uh, custard custard and what is any any anything little milk product you know the potato salad these are the things the potato salad pastry custards the question will be exactly like this the patient had a custard and within six hours had a vomiting what is the diagnosis staphylococcus aureus but if suppose that is a you know, that is a which one that is a uh, uh, let's say if it is a fried rice chinese fried rice so what is it it is a b serious that's what i always say be serious while you're eating chinese fried rice that question frequently when you eat a chinese fried rice which is the most be serious and that is also within six hours the first the emetic type the vomiting type we have diarrhea type also that's different for bacillus serious but the emetic type within six hours two organisms staphylococcus aureus or your bacillus serious okay food is different the fried rice means bacillus serious but if it's a pastry or potato salad please think about staphylococcus aureus not only for example but even normally also whenever your friends or family member says that is staphylococcus aureus infection okay yes now toxic shock syndrome toxic shock syndrome as i told you this is one of the dangerous one against a super antigen and toxic syndrome is common female using tampons tampons or tampons you know whatever you call so usually the unhygienic condition the unhygienic condition it's it causes the staphylococcus aureus to release the toxin and the patient will get what toxic shock syndrome very risky it ends in what uh sepsis and failure okay these are the things your hypotension septic shock you know multi-organ failure and shock so that's basically septic shock you get a patient septic shock this question was asked so two females are coming one female female with uh previously we just spoke what is that young female young female uti that is your sapra sapra but when you're talking about toxic shock syndrome fit uh, uh female with tampons you know female who are using tampons is common in them okay then the third one is stripless. I showed you the picture before. The baby having this uh, staphylococcus color skin syndrome. Toxin name is important. It's caused by exfoliative toxin or epidermal lytic toxin. Exfoliative. Ex the foliate. The skin is getting foliated. Exfoliative or epidermal lytic toxin. Also one of the uh, dangerous disease. Okay. Now the other things are cytotoxin. Now we go to diagnosis. And diagnostic point of view, as I told you, again, I'm repeating it. Staphs. Staphs kiss was kya hota ek to cat hota hai. And again, I told staffs like the staffs like Valentine's Day. Dusra hai, unke pas staffs kiss gold hota hai. Gold. Why I'm saying? Because you see golden pigment. Golden pigment. You have a golden pigment uh, producing. Golden yellow pigment is produced by your which one? Staphylococcus. And other, other things important is they go to which hotel? Ludlam's hotel. Ludlam's is the special media, sensitive media. Ludlam's hotel they go. And what they eat there? They eat grapes. 
they eat grapes. Why I say? Because grape-like cluster is characteristic for staphylococcus. Grape-like cluster. Grape-like cluster. Okay. These are the important features you should know. Cat catalyst positive, Pant uh, Valentine's Day because they have PVL toxin and golden pigment. And uh, if you remember one more gold pigment producing organism. Okay, we'll talk about it. Now you see this colony. It's a beta hemolytic colony, beta hemolytic, but remember it is pinhead colony. It is a pinhead colony, pinhead colony. Okay, why I talk about pinhead? Because pinpoint also we have pinpoint colony that is characteristic for your streptococcus. Remember that pinpoint is streptococcus, but pinhead is for your Pinhead is this pin, especially if you're talking about streptococcus, pyogens, and uh, agalactia, we have pin point. But here it is pin head. Okay, this is important. And this is your grape like clusters. You can see the grape like cluster, gram positive cocci, gram positive cocci. Right? Important. So again, repeating nutrient agar mein what pigment? What pigment? Once again, nutrient agar, the question will be asked, uh, streptococcus will produce golden yellow, golden yellow pigment, golden yellow pigment. But which is the one green pigment producing organism? You remember green color pigment? Who produces which bite produce green? Your ecta kapur, pseudomonas, pseudomonas, pseudomonas. Okay. Uh, Pyoverdin, pyorubin, pyo uh, melanin pigments. Okay. And then pin head colonies, Staphylococcus aureus, selective media, ludlam I just told all are important. And another one is your manitol salt agar. I already told you manitol salt agar is only for Staphylococcus aureus. Manitol salt agar. Now, Gram stain, it's a grape like clusters. It produces what grape like clusters. You have grape like clusters. Okay. Now there's important one MRSA. MRSA, these in recently you must have heard frequently. MRSA, MRSA in hospital acquired infections, there's important role. It is resistant to many drugs. So that is also a question frequently asked. Which is the gene that gets mutated in uh, MRSA? It's your MECA gene. MECA gene. MECA gene is the one that gets mutated. So what's the drug of choice? If vancomycin is, if methicillin is a mutant, uh, methicillin is not what methicillin resistance means, your next, the drug of choice would be vancomycin only. If vancomycin is also not working, go with ticoplanin or Fifth generation cephalosporin. Fifth generation, not the third or fourth or not. It's a fifth generation. Remember that. Okay, that's it. These are the important questions. So what is the best diagnosis? Do PCR. PCR for MECA gene is the best. And one more test we have is your cefoxetine. 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 This test is the one of the important tests for diagnosing MRSA. That will be asked. Cefoxetine, this is, it represents the methicillin MRSA. Okay. And based on the size, if it is uh, resistant less than 23 or 25, we say it is MRSA. Uh, cefoxetin and oxacillin. This all will be your question. Oxacillin an option. Which of the following can be used? And they can give all of the above. So for um, um, MRSA uh, detection, Kelly, you can do a PCR to detect the MECA gene or you put two discs. Either cefoxetin or oxacillin. Cefoxetin is best. That's it. Okay. Now VRA. VRSA is basically VANI. Their uh, MRSA is a MECA. Vancomycin is a VANI gene. Again, here, PCR is the best once again. And the treatment of choice would be your lenisolid and daptomycin. Lenisolid and daptomycin. Yes, if vanco doesn't go, you go for lenisolid, right? So vancomycin, diptomycin, lenisolid, daptomycin. And the most common spread of uh, this staphylococcus aureus plasmid is transduction. This was asked. Not transformation, not uh, conjugation. It's transduction. Staphylococcus aureus, ka, this, uh, this R plasmid, ka, this, this drug resistance is because of transduction. Okay. Right. So we are done with the staphylococcus. Now we're going to streptococcus. Streptococcus again, very, 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 very easy. When you talk about streptococcus, the first thing is you're going to classify it based on the hemolysis. We are going based on the hemolysis. We're going to divide into three types. We are going to start it with beta, first beta, then alpha, then gamma. Why? Not alpha, beta, gamma. We are going to start with beta because beta means complete hemolysis. That itself is the question. So what are things you're going to remember? See, this is a complete hemolysis. We have complete hemolysis. Here it's the alpha is partial A for alpha, partial alpha, if you forget also, okay. And the gamma is no hemolysis. There is no hemolysis. And what are the examples here? I'm going to talk. If complete hemolysis means two things. One is type A streptococcus and type B. Type A is your streptococcus pyogens. Don't forget pyogens. And type B is your streptococcus Agalactia, Agalactia, A, A is not A, remember A for A nahi hai, here it's exception, B is Agalactia, A is Pyogens, other name, okay, both are important, they call you either way, they say type A or type B, and what about partial, partial you have Streptococcus viridans, and other one is your Streptococcus pneumonia, Streptococcus 
pneumonia pneumonia or both are important partial hemolysis means there, can, there is no complete hemolysis instead there is a greenish discoloration you will see around the colonies here no hemolysis classic example is enterococcus enterococcus this classification you have to know write it and stick it in the wall okay because that's important complete is a and because it, it, it's easy not that difficult it's just you know not to make any mistakes okay so beta again i told you complete hemolysis so it's group a or group b so again, I'm repeating once again, what is that? If it is a group, the streptococcus, the first one is your streptococcus. Group A is pyogens, streptococcus pyogenes, and B is agalactia, agalactia, agalactia. Okay, now basitis, what, how do you differentiate? There is how to differentiate this pyogens from agalactia. Very, very easy. One is PYR, naam mein hai, pyo agya, so PYR. It's easy, this question will be asked. But most important is basitis in puchta hai. I, in my exam, I remember I had this question. Basitus in kya karta hai? Basi, basi ke kya hota hai? Pus hota hai. Basi gets pus infection. Pus ka matlab pyogens. Basi gets pus. Bas, because you don't confuse. Basi gets pus, so pyogens. Okay, bus ho gaya. Then, group B ko kaise yaad karen? Group B ka basitation and the POR is negative. It will not come. So, uska kya hata hai? How to remember for B? B for boys. B for boys. You know, boys are very naughty. B for boys. So, boys ko kya pasand hai? Camping karna pasand hai. Dusra unka hippo ke saath keelna pasand hai. Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus ke saath keelna pasand hai. Bas. So, group B, agalactia ka do positive hai. Camp and hippo, hipporate hydrolysis. Repeatedly asked question. You can't leave this or omit this. You must know. This is important. I'm again stressing streptococcus. Ka, all the tests, individual tests, important for uh, pneumococcus ka separate uh, uh, group A and group B. E. This only they'll ask usually. In these three you, know, you should know very nice. And I'll make you easy that you'll never forget. So these are the way how you're going to remember. B agalati, boys like hippo and camping, not the reverse camp. Reverse camp is close to them, per fringens. Okay, ye camp hota hai iska. And dusra camp, camp lo back to bolna ma. That is a different story. Camp me kya hota hai? You have seagull appearance, seagull appearance hota hai. Uska people like to do screwing, uska butcher's media, hai na? butcher's hai because poultry se aata hai, poultry se hi camp lo aata hai, uska cut karne ke butcher chahiye. So butcher's media. And micro aerophilic camp can the cow the tent can the sub uh, oxygen come out the warm hot thermophilic. So that is in camp. We already discussed. If you want, you go to that video and check it out. Those are important things. So don't forget these are important camp. Either agala cheta reverse camp close to them per fringes. Okay, negligence reaction. Wala oh cheese. Okay, I hope you remember guys. Okay, these are important. These micro fingertips believe me, it's very, very, very easy comparing to most of your subjects. Only if you make the clues like what I'm giving, you will uh, enjoy the micro. Okay, so that's it. PYR is nothing but pyridinol test. Okay, now this is a camp test. So this is a camp test. Okay, pata hai. What you do? You put a streptococcus always in the center. Then ye positive a gaya to. You put a, your colony. Up. Kisi colony ko identify karna it's group A, group B. You put that colony A and B. So this one, if it is positive, yeah, actually this is this is this is group B. This is group B and this is group A because group A negative data, right? So group B gives the thing. So group B is agalactic acid. If it's positive, you'll get an arrow like this. If you get an arrow like that, is positive. So you can have this picture. Picture means which is this camp positive, so which is organism, it's agalactic or group B. Bas ho gaya. Okay, what about this is a hippopotamus? Hippo, hippurate hydrolysis, hippurate hydrolysis. Yeah, be aapko group B ka, uh, uh, important. Okay, right now, alpha, alpha, I told you it's a partial hemolysis. It's come matlab, we will have only green discoloration. Partial hota hai, usko se, usko green is this because of biliveridin. Um, partially breakdown hoga to kya hoga hemoglobin breakdown me, you will have the biliveridin. So that's the reason. Okay. So don't forget. Now, iska kaise yaad karna? Pneumonia, aapko yaad, you have to remember in your plus two, school mein, what did you do in science group? You, in, in bio group mein, in bio group mein, kya padai kiya? Pneumococcus padai kiya. Pneumococcus, pneumococcus. Hey, streptococcus pneumonia and pneumococcus are same. Don't confuse. Streptococcus pneumonia or pneumococcus, they are same, same. Don't confuse, okay? Don't think, ye kya hai, kahan se aagya? Okay, they are same. Pneumococcus, streptococcus pneumonia, same, same. You better remember streptococcus pneumonia itself. Most of the time, they ask like that only, okay? So, by, bio, I mean, bola? B for bile solubility, repeated question. I for inulin fermentation, repeated question. O for optogen synthesis, very, very important question. Optogen, my exam, maybe, I think I... Three or four exams made, this question was repeated in my time. I'm talking about my uh, my PG time another time. Okay. Uh, so, bio. Bio is for optation test. Ka, uh, uh, optation. So, okay. So, bio, you have to Optation in bile solubility, in fermentation. These will be negative for your viridex pass. That's it. Okay. Now, gamma hemolysis means no hemolysis. And it's a group D. Group D. We call group D also. Gamma, ka, we say group D. Two organisms are important. One is enterococcus and bovis. Bovis is not important. Nahi hai. Um, but your enterococcus is important. Enterococcus also give PYR positive. And other thing is that E for extreme. Remember, extreme. 
एक्सट्रीम एक्सट्रीम कंडीशन में आपको एंट्रोकोकस ग्रो करता है व्हाट आर दे दे आर वन ऑफ द थिंग इज दिस योर ग्रो इन सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज एनियर पी एच नाइन पॉइंट फोर फोर्टी परसेंटेज ऑफ बाइल एंड ऑल्सो टेम्परेचर मोर देन फिफ्टी फाइव ओनली योर एंट्रोकोकस कैन ग्रो लाइक दिस कंडीशन सो एक्सट्रीम टेम्परेचर और पी एच एनियल कंडीशन में योर एंट्रोकोकस ग्रोस दैट इज द डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस बिटवीन योर एंट्रोकोकस एंड योर बोविस but endocrine specific and one more classic test is your esculin don't worry too much everything you have a clue e for esculin e for enterococcus theek hai enterococcus enterococcus because aapka kya aapka aapki ye confuse the bile solubility is kaise confuse so bile solubility is for streptococcus pneumoniae bile esculin e e for esculin enterococcus ka aata hai theek hai remember this for enterococcus that's it this is very simple so why you have to confuse okay So now let's go to pneumonia. Very very important one individual. Okay, streptococcus pneumonia. What are the characteristic features you should know? Look at this picture. This is a gram positive diplococci. Diplococci means two cocci. Ho jaye na diplococci. So what is the appearance here? If you see, aise hai. The appearance is like this. Okay, aise hai tar. So this is called what? This is the lanceolate shape. Lanceolate, lanceolate. Okay, this is what lanceolate. It's called lanceolate shape. Both they are flame shape. To be both can be flame shape. Both are right and both are questions. Questions, questions. Yeah, picture be. आपको आ सकता है exam में. Okay, right. Now, ऐसे आपको दूसरा भी है gram negative cocci है. Gram negative diplo cocci भी है. क्या क्या है? Do you remember? They are gonococcus. दूसरा है आपको meningococcus. उसका कैसे आता है? This we already finished in your Nigeria. Nigeria meningitis, Nigeria gonorrhea. So gonococcus how it is? It is kidney shaped. ऐसे आता है. Meningococcus का कैसा होता है? Lens shaped. Lens shaped. Okay. Just to remind you. Okay. Just to remind you. These are important. Don't forget. Don't forget. Picture में ऐसे आएगा. ठीक है. Diplo cocci. Okay. Right. So हो गया. Now capsulated. I told you streptococcus pneumonia का the main villain factor is the capsule, 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 and that is a polysaccharide capsule like usual ones. so capsulated eh? so uh, now what happened what is uh, streptococcus pneumonia is the most common cause of your low bar pneumonia lobular is strep streptococcus aureus low bar is your streptococcus pneumonia frequent asked question and most common cause of meningitis in any age group in all age group okay not in the new except new ones adolescent adult sab ko yahi common hai theek hai aapko new ones ka pata hai which one which one by this time you must be knowing we were repeating it it's usually either e coli or group B. We are going to talk agalatia group. Agalatia or E. coli is the most common one, followed by your listeria. Okay. Now, most common cause of uh, other one is it's the most common cause of uh, otitis media, not otitis externa. Otitis externa is caused by your eczema gangrenosum. Remember that is your pseudomonas. Okay. Otitis externa is by your pseudomonas. Pseudomonas. Ah. Uh, now here uh, it causes sinusitis, epiglottis also. But epiglottis most common causes H influenza, but uh, pneumonia causes because H influenza is capsule. You know the sign that is a, the X-ray. Me, you see thumbprint appearance, thumbprint appearance. Okay, thumbprint appearance. That's also question X-ray. So any epiglottitis may ho sakta hai. Risk factor splenectomy. That's what why in splenectomy which vaccine is indicated during the splenectomy we have to give the pneumococcal vaccine. That's important question frequently asked. Pneumococcal vaccine is important. We are going to talk about it in a while. That's a question, question, question. Please don't forget. Okay, now. What is this colony? Typical colony. This colony can be asked in your exam. Either you have a gram ka lanceolate shape, but ask that nee. So, ye aapko they ask you. What is this? How it looks? It looks like a carom coin. Carom coin, or we also call it as what? Droughtman. Droughtman's. Droughtman's colony. Droughtman's colony. Okay. D R E U G. Drought. Okay. Or carom. कैरम कॉइन कॉलोनी ओके दैट्स इट सो ये देखो इट लुक्स वेरी परफेक्ट कैरम कॉइन जैसा है यार ठीक है कॉलोनीज दिस इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ द एंजाइम कॉल्ड अमाइलेज एंजाइम अमाइलेज एंजाइम ओके जस्ट दैट्स इट ओके कैरम कॉइन और ड्राउटमैन्स कॉलोनी ड्राउटमैन्स कॉलोनी राइट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क्ड नाउ नाउ सो एज आई टोल्ड यू कैप्सूल इज द इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर एंड यूजुअली आई टोल्ड ऑल द मोस्ट ऑफ द कैप्सूल द पॉलीसैकरेट एक्सेप्ट योर Except your anthrax का क्या है polypeptide. So what is so all polysaccharide capsule की what reaction? Kullen's reaction. Kullen's reaction. Kullen's reaction. I'm repeating again again. But आपका basis anthrax में क्या है polypeptide है polypeptide है. उसके वजह से that gives which reaction positive? Macfadians. Macfadians. Macfadians reaction positive. Don't forget. That's a question repeatedly asked. Basis anthrax is का macfadian आएगा. But all other capsule is step pneumonia or H influenza, meningo, whatever. Whoever has a capsule give Kullen's reaction positive. Okay. And prevention is your vaccine. What are the vaccine we have? Pneumococcal polysaccharide PPV twenty three. 
PPV23. And that is in a splenectomy patient we are going to give. And for children, we give PCV. C for children. PCV. So it's easy. PCV children ka PPV23 for the adults. That's it. Okay. Two vaccines. This is important. You have to know. And viridens. Now we'll go to viridens. Viridens. It's very important because viridens is mostly in the mouth, oral cavity. Oral cavity means jada hai. Isi mein dental caries. Which one is causing the dental caries? Most common cause of dental caries. There's a question. Dental caries karte mutants cause karte. Streptococcus mutants. It's important. And viridens kya karte? Sanguis it causes the subacute endocarditis. Acute to apka streptococcus aur is ho gaya. Subacute hai to viridens. Specially damaged heart. Ye bhi question hai. Native heart mein Staphylococcus aureus. Damaged heart mein viridens group. Viridens mein specially sanguis. Sanguis. Okay. Sanguis. Okay. And sanguis, you have to remember. This is one of the important ones. Okay. Now, Staphylococcus pyogens. Staphylococcus pyogens. Yeah. Uh, that's a group A. Group A important. As I told you, repeated questions will be here. First of all, group is group A. Classification is important. Two classifications here. One is, one is Lancy field. One is Lancy, Lancy field. Other one is your, other one is your Griffith. Kaise yad karna? Lance field is C. So it's based on carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. Car based on the carbohydrate antigen. Based on carbohydrate, we are classifying it to A to V, A to V. Except I and J, A to V. Okay. Carbohydrate. C for C. Question. Griffith ko kaise classify? Based on M protein. M protein. So iska kya hata hai? MG motors. MG or GM. India mein aajkal yehi popular hai na? Which one of the important car company? So MG. Easy. Okay, M protein, Griffith, and your carbohydrate, Lancifield. Important, they will ask. Based on 8 F, more than 100 F. So what are the virulence factors? Virulence factors, we have many important virulence factors. They are like this. Hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase is one of the reason, main reason, infection spread only. Ke liye. Hyaluronidase, it breaks the pus, it breaks the tissues, etc. So kel, infection is also spread. Ho jate. If you see cellulitis in diabetic patients, the skin pura, actually the picture no pura, egg them red. Hai. That's because of hyaluronidase. And we have DNAs also, and we have streptolysis in O, and yes, O causes rheumatic fever. We're going to talk about it, rheumatic fever, autoantibody related diseases. And yes, causes your, uh, yes is not, yes is just non-immunogenic. Remember that. Uh, and DNAs, this DNAs causes PSGN, post-epidural glomerular nephritis, important, post-epidural glomerular nephritis. Okay, so these are important. We are, we are going to talk that also now in a while. See this next one. Streptokinase, you know, frequently, you know, we use in treatment for myocardial infarct as a thrombolytic therapy. For every heart attack, if you go to the hospital, the immediate thing they do is this what? They give this thrombolytic injection. That is basically streptokinase. So one good thing with our uh, bacteria are this. Okay? So streptokinase is usually isolated from the uh, streptococcus bacteria, pyogenes. Okay, right. Now see this one. So this is basically scarlet fever. This is basically scarlet fever. This is scarlet fever rash. What we call pastias line. Pastias line. Okay. Scarlet fever. Scarlet fever bache pasta kata hai. Scarlet fever bache pasta kata hai. Okay. So, and one more thing, strawberry tongue. Strawberry ek pasta hai, dosa strawberry hai. Okay, remember strawberry tongue. So, the main reason is SPE toxin, which is also super antigen. We just spoke in a while. That causes scarlet fever. Okay, scarlet. That's what is important. So, see, strawberry main, strawberry tongue is this one, but we also have strawberry. There are many strawberries. Okay. I thought of telling it later. I'll try to tell now only. Strawberry vagina we have, which is caused by your trichomonas vaginalis. And we have strawberry lips, which is by Kawasaki. Kawasaki disease. Ab kya karogi? Kawasaki bike ko hot garam garam Kawasaki bike ko lips se kiss karogi. So you'll have strawberry lips. And then we have strawberry nose. Strawberry nose kiss me? Uh, nose. Nose kiss me aata hai? Renosporidiosis. Renosporidiosis. See kitna? How beautiful is our microbiology? So many strawberries we are giving for everything. You know, the bacteria is giving strawberry for everything, every part of our body. But scarlet fever mein tongue, okay, strawberry appearance hota hai. So this is the, see other diseases caused by your streptococcus. If you see her, uh, what is this first disease? Throat, pharyngitis. Streptococcus pyogenes is one of the most common cause of what? What, what, what? Your pharyngitis or sore throat, okay? Yeah, pharyngitis. Then. Most common bacterial cause of pharyngitis is your, this one. And then this is the cellulitis. Diabetic patients ka, as a poor or red ortho to cellulitis, okay, it spreads, infection spreads at all because hyaluronic enzyme, ye aapko necrotizing fasciitis, necrotizing fasciitis, saare necrosis hota hai, necrosis, full of necrosis, that's what it is, uh, uh, necrotizing fasciitis. So, we are going to write, I'm going to write it here also, don't worry. So, bacteria itself, what are the infections caused? In throat, it causes which infection? In throat, it causes the, uh, throat, it causes, excuse me, yeah, in throat, it causes which infection? Pharyngitis, acute pharyngitis or also we call it as what acute pharyngitis or otherwise also called as what sore throat sore throat koi bhi aapko sore throat aata hai please remember the bacterial cause of your sore throat is always your streptococcus pyogenes okay i'm sorry excuse me uh, and then uh, excuse me okay 
and the skin infection the most common cause of skin infections are excuse me just going to wipe my hands okay yeah skin infection the most common cause of skin infections are as i told you what are they one is the just now i showed the picture which one is that that is your uh, that is your which one cellu cellulitis yes cellulitis and other one is your necrotizing fasciitis necrotizing fasciitis and other one is erysi pilla erysi pilla you see wherever there is erysi pilla necrotizing cellulitis ye sare ee ee words se aata hai na ye sare cause streptococcus pyogenes not streptococcus aureus streptococcus aureus ko alag hai ye teen disease it's important they will ask you which is the most common cause of cellulitis or necrotizing fasciitis erysi pilla means it is your scarlet fever ye pura aapko streptococcus pyogenes hai okay you have to know I already showed you the picture. The rest you have to know. Okay. Now, the selective media. I told you crystal violet agar, and then I transport media spikes media. Spikes media. मैंने क्यों बोला? क्या बोला था? The spikes stripper strippers हैं. Strippers क्या करता है? Spike के ऊपर जाके dance करता है. These are the strippers. Strippers मतलब streptococcus. Strippers nothing but streptococcus. Streptococcus spike के ऊपर dance करता है. Remember? So spikes media. Okay. That's it. Now autoimmune diseases में you have rheumatic fever and PSGN, post operative glomerular nephritis. So how to मैंने बोला था सी वेनिक ऑफ स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस पाइजन की इन्फेक्शन ये तो थ्रोट इन्फेक्शन आ सकता है स्किन इन्फेक्शन आ सकता है but repeatedly aa jayega to throat infection kya hoga your body will produce auto antibody and we'll have autoimmune disease what is autoimmune disease either it is rheumatic fever or it is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis that means in your kidney kidney affect ho sakta hai nahi hai to rheumatic fever mein bahut sara organs aata hai usually after main to pharyngitis again i'm repeating the ye rheumatic fever usually after pharyngitis ye bhi question hai sore throat ke baad repeatedly aapko rheumatic fever aata hai you can see young females having joint pain heart pain and they get the history of repeated throat infection then that is your rheumatic fever okay but psg in usually after skin infection koi bhi skin infection cellulitis or necrotizing fasciitis koi bhi ho repeated unka streptococcus infection aata hai uske wajah se post operative glomerular nephritis aa sakta hai so usme rheumatic fever mein we give jones credit jones credit is nothing but you what are the things you have diseases you must be knowing in a by hearting a five things five criteria you have one is carditis carditis number one number two is erythema marginatum erythema marginatum and then we have skin nodule and third one is migrating polyarthritis migrating polyarthritis means uh, joint pain bada joint mein aise spread hote rehte ek ek se idhar idhar se udhar shoulder se uh, wrist wrist se ankle ankle se knee like this it spreads okay and then one more this is courier courier is a uh, cns brain related thing that's called sydenham's courier s y d e n sydenham's courier patient will lose the control involuntary movements okay so three uh, uh, so skin nodule three ho gaya four ho gaya joint ka fifth ho gaya brain ka so these are five major criteria and then minor criteria is there accordingly you grade that's a medicine question actually so uska uh, uh, here what happened here you will have nephritic syndrome a b question hai post operative glomerular nephritis nephritic syndrome matlab kya hai the, the usually the the patient will have cola color urine cola color urine se agar sir mere urine hai uh, aise uh, cola color ekdam blackish reddish black aata hai kya karu That is because nephritic syndrome. उसमें क्या है हेमाचूरिया है Because of hematuria only it's cola color. Blood breakdown करके आपके यूरिन में जाता है हेमाचूरिया और पेशेंट विल ऑल्सो हैव हाइपर टेंशन and as a patient have what mild proteinuria the patient has mild proteinuria and mild edema yes are mild mild not that much serious now in the diagnostic point of view from the diagnostic point of view which of the things will go high this for in aromatic fever aso titer aso titer will go high anti that is anti streptococcus o titer when in you know, post operative glomerulitis it's your dnas dnas b will go high more than 300 this you have to remember this question will be asked this is very important so please remember it uh I, i just need a break one sec sorry guys the i couldn't explain uh, the right uh, against streptococcus agalati there's a time limit in my this thing so i can't uh, write it here but there are a few points we finished up group a group a streptococcus pyogenes only this much okay if you know this you will get amazing score in that now group uh, b agalati you have to know only few things what are they it causes what in neonatal meningitis neonatal sepsis so one of the most common cause and already i told you everything we explained what it is uh, it gives what camp positive and hippocrate hydrolysis positive that's it this much only you should know okay thank you so much so we done with the streptococcus and streptococcus so uh, the the next class mostly it will be your ersinia and uh, ersinia and vibrio okay thank you thank you so much